Welcome to the UEFA Cup. Welcome to the San Nicola Stadium here in Bari. Today it's Fiorentina against Hajduk Split. This is a first round, first leg match. Alongside Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill. And Tommy, Fiorentina, although they're the home side, having to play this in Bari. Well, there was a little bit of a disturbance at one of their games in the UEFA Cup before, Mike, so they were penalised and they're going to have to play a couple of games away from home. That's generally what happens. And as we check out the competition, you can see eight rounds of the competition, two-legged match uh, final, and uh, the greater goal aggregate advances. Of course, you have uh, all kinds of uh, things can happen in here, Mike. Yes, and uh, in fact, uh, Hajju Split, one of tonight's teams, had to in fact uh, qualify for this competition. Fiorentina automatically coming into the first round. So this is just the first leg. Fiorentina will be looking for a good victory to take to split for the second leg in a fortnight's time. Stay with us when we return. We'll have the team lineups and the first half kickoff. The UEFA Cup is next. To our coverage of the UEFA Cup, this first round, first leg encounter being played here in Bari between Fiorentina and Hajduk Split. Well, for Fiorentina, it's important they get a good result here before they travel to Croatia for the uh, second leg. And they'll be looking to one key player, Tommy, because this player can turn a game. Well, there's a man who can certainly score goals, but this man can turn a game around. That's Edmundo. And Edmundo, well, he's had a few problems here with Fiorentina. He's never had a problem scoring goals in his life. Discipline has generally been his problem. He knows how to put the ball in the back of the net, Mike. And on his day, he's as good as anybody. And on his day, he's as bad as anybody. Well, there is the Fiorentina side. A very strong uh, side, named by coach Giovanni Trapattoni. Gabriel Badastuda, of course, will lead the attack. What a strike force with Badastuda and Emundo. George Heinrich is a recent sign-in this season who has come from Borussia Dortmund. And also another new sign-in, and that is Amor, the Spanish international. He's come from uh, Barcelona. As for Hajju Split, well, there's some familiar names there. Gabric, the Croatian international goalkeeper. They've also got uh, Brejkovic, the player who wears the number four. He was with the Croatian team that did so well in Euro 96. But they've got one young star, the number 23, that's uh, Jurka Vuko. And he's a player to really watch out for. He's got lightning pace and he could certainly cause a few problems for the Fiorentina side. Shot there of our referee today, all officials from England. That is Graham Barber, the referee, comes from Pryford in Surrey. Hijink split then in the all-white, get us underway. They're attacking the goal to our left in the first half. And considering this is a brand new season here in Italy, this Bari pitch does not look in the best of condition, Tommy. No, it certainly doesn't. There's a lot of very ball spots out there, especially around the midfield. Valentina, who already opened up their campaign in uh, Serie A, but just a one week of matches, but they've made a good start, Tommy. Yeah, well, they certainly have, and uh, when you look down at the field there tonight, you'd be very surprised that Rui Costa's not out there, Mike. He's not even on the bench because he scored a goal against Empoli on Sunday, along with Batistuta. It's Rui Costa missing tonight. There's another couple of big names. It just shows you the strength of this uh, Fiorentina squad. Well, I think one of the problems they've had over the last number of years, Mike, has been at the back. I mean, there's been no questioning their strike force, but they've got Torricelli from Juventus. They have Repke in there now as well from the Czech Republic. So they have a lot of strong, very strong defenders. Yes, and they've also got the master coach now, Giovanni Trapattoni, who is so good at organising defences. His teams very rarely give up uh, very many goals. And Trapattoni, in fact, has a very good... Uh, record in this competition he's taken teams to three uefa cup triumphs juventus back in the 1996 uh, 76 77 season into milan in 1990-91 and then juventus again in 1992-93 season so he's got three uh, winners medals as a coach Toldo will take this free kick for fiorentina Oh, I told about a great year last year, Mike, in goal in Syria. I mean, one of the best goalkeepers that's around. One of the tallest, too. In fact, he's the second tallest player now in, in uh, Syria. Can you be the tallest? Yes, and Toldo has made six international appearances for 
Italy. Oh. Ball played forward that time. It was Coes. Throw again to Fiorentina. Number of their supporters have made the trip here to Bari. Certainly not the sort of crowd that they would have expected and that they would have had if it had been played on their own stadium. Fiorentina. So important in these European ties where if it is tied on aggregate, remember after two legs, away goals do count as double. So for a team like Hydrich Split tonight, it would be very good for them if they could get a goal on the road. I was saying earlier they had to qualify. Actually overcame Malmo of Sweden. They drew 1-1 in split. But 1-2-1 uh, in that Malmo in the second leg. Well, I hope Fiorentina's not looking for anything from the road tonight, Mike. They don't count as road goals. These ones would count as home goals, even though they're very far away from their familiar surroundings. It's going to be a free kick for Hydrug Split. In the Croatian Championship three times. They've also been Croatian Cup winners twice. Doing the double in the 1994-95 season. Well, Croatia football is really on a roll at the moment. I mean, so many other teams doing so well. The international team, of course, we all know about. Croatia Zagreb. And they took care of Glasgow Celtic. Yes, and uh, they open up their Champions League campaign uh, tomorrow against uh, Ajax. And uh, Zagreb. I think the one thing that's key to Croatian football is the discipline, Mike. They don't lose their form, they, they don't give away silly free kicks. They're very, very well coached, all the Croatian teams. Yes, and they've got good technical skill as well as Imundo gets that one into the box, easily cleared. It's Heinrich, German international. Heinrich very good history. Nine Yugoslav League titles. He won before the independence for Croatia. They also won the Yugoslav Cup nine times. As Fiorentina, and their first real attack. Lucia was the player who came across to block the player. In fact, who was born in Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, Torotti loves to come attacking on that right hand side, and you're going to find him up the field most of the game. Comes in and uh, Gabriech takes that one uh, quite comfortably. Veteran goalkeeper now, 36 years old. Oh, Mr. Trapattoni back to very, very uh, good surroundings for him. It's a hugely successful coach, Trapattoni. As we said, he's won three UEFA Cups. He's also won a couple of uh, Copa Italias, six Serie A titles, a Bundesliga title, a European Cup, and a European Cup Winners' Cup, and a World Club Championship. Uh, Falcone allows Torricelli to come in. Torricelli had the right angle that time. Torricelli, of course, very familiar to our viewers, playing with Juventus. Strange to see him in a different outfit. Not the most technically brilliant player in the world, Mike, but certainly there's no question about what he'll give you. Yes, and uh, Trapattoni, very instrumental in bringing him from uh, Juventus. He wanted somebody at the back to organise the defence. And somebody who also can win those challenges. As you said, Tommy, it's been a weak point for Fiorentina over the last couple of seasons. They've scored plenty of goals, but they've conceded them. Well, you might have imagined that Torricelli would start out on the right-hand side of the defence, but uh, with Padalino not available today, Torricelli is actually the central defender. Now Heinrich. Emundo. Away from uh, one challenge. Now Heinrich. And the flag went up. Oh, Heinrich drifting up on that outside. Let's see where he is when the ball is played. Oh, he's definitely onside. I mean, no question about how it's not even close. There's the ball being played, and even the player on the bottom of the screen was playing him onside, but uh, the referee's assistant didn't see it that way. Fiorentina. Yeah, 
Argentina. Still really trying to settle into a rhythm. Very early days for them, of course. The season these days started a lot earlier. Hydric split, of course. To play qualifier matches. Well, Fiorentina have two competitive games under the belt, Mike. They beat Padova 1-0 in the first round of the Italian Cup, so that was at home, so they face a tough game on the road against that. Yes, and they play Vicenza this coming Sunday in a Serie A fixture. Oh, how'd you split? Oh, you can see Edmundo has had a, an operation on his forehead, Mike, and I uh, understand it's still quite sore. Looks sore. Throw for Fiorentina. Edmundo that time was the player who was uh, fouled. Oh, you just wonder how that would uh, affect his heading abilities, Mike, with that lump on his forehead. that time it goes to Hyduke split Hyduke who over the years have produced some outstanding players a very good uh, score for youngsters in split Mondo got in there first that time Hides past players so easily in Mondo I'm trying to pick out Patti Stuta I don't think there was any more disappointed man in the world with the way the World Cup final went than Edmundo, Mike. I mean, he's definitely a great competitor. He wants to win every time he goes out. Yes, and of course, uh, getting back to the World Cup final, his name was on the initial team sheet as a player in the starting 11, which was then uh, withdrawn and he was moved to the bench to make way for Ronaldo. And then when he came on, you could see the effects of him not being in good uh, mental state because he played very poorly came on when he got a few touches on the ball that were really bad as you can see Trapattoni there pondering Trapattoni was the man who apparently got Edmondo to change his mind about going back because Edmondo said there was no way he was going back to Fiorentina but Trapattoni said he'd give him a jeep and a sofa a couple of round trip tickets to Rio for Edmondo and his family sounds like a good deal that's the other thing, also he had a contract. Yeah, that was one of the important things. Now Heinrich. This is Amor. Amor again. Heinrich. Fiorentina now being forced back. Saying that Heinrich over the years of up a big reputation for developing talent when you look at some of the players who started their careers at high Dukes, but now playing overseas Alan Boxic of course uh, with Lazio we've got Robert Yarni who has joined Real Madrid Igor Tudor this year will be playing in Serie A with Juventus Slavon Bilic and over at Everton in the Premier League Stamich at Derby County, also in the English Premier League. Sanovic he has a, a great reputation in the school in the split for producing outstanding players. They believe they've got another one who's just as good, and that's uh, Vuko. We haven't seen too much of so far, the 21 year old. Oh, there's a typical Trapattoni effort, uh, but I'm surprised that he's not trying to put a little bit more pressure on Hadjuk Splint because it's very important to score goals here for Fiorentina. This Hadjuk uh, very, very hard to beat. On their home ground. This, in fact, is their 50th game in uh, European competition. Mondo putting a bit of pressure on, he thought he had won a corner kick, but uh, referee's assistant said, no, I don't think Batty Stewart has had a touch of the ball yet. No, 
Well, he's been closely marked. They've got a sweeper there to cover, as we see. Emundo. That should be a corner kick. That's last touched by a player in white. So, Manish Studer is uh, penalised. So, the Hydruk split bench there. Katalinic, the coach, Ivan Katalinic, former international. The ball is lifted forward. And now the first real opportunity, perhaps, for a high duke split. Ball comes across, but a bit too high. Butcher will come forward. Oh, Tarotti makes a nice, timely tackle on the ball, knocking it away. What's going on out there? Shelly will be a key man as they defend this corner. An outswinger and nearly a free header at the far post. And Studer had come back to try to reinforce that defence. There's a lot of players there ball watching, Tommy. Oh, a lot of players didn't react to the ball at all and uh, I mean when you have your big striker as the only man who's rising for a challenge in the box that's not a good sign. Dortmund two years ago. Well, first real shot of the game. Safely taken there by Gabriel. And uh, quickly taken free kick. And Moore was the player who really got all his power behind this. <laughs> Dutch football this week. Features two teams in the top three. The league leaders final traveling to Enschede to take on FC20 who are in third spot. You'll be able to see that on Tuesday. Check your local listings for times. That's 20 against final. That's Dutch football this coming week. Through on the far side for a high duke split. So for a quarter an hour gone, still no score. First round, first leg, coming to you from the San Nicolas Stadium here in Bari, where Fiorentina are the home side against Hajduk Split. And just over 16 minutes gone, still no score. Alongside Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill, Hajduk Split. Oh, and just clipping the top of the crossbar there. Toldo was mighty relieved to see that one go behind. And a good strike that time, coming in from uh, Skoko. Skoko gets free just outside of the box and he drops it inside comes off the top of the crossbar Skoko in fact an Australian international comes from uh, Melbourne in Australia where he used to play for Geelong uh, Croatia and like a number of Australians uh, has made his way to the ancestral home of his parents the Croatian community in both Melbourne and Sydney in Australia supporters of football over the years in their adopted country. 
That's another Australian on the bench today, Anthony Saric. In fact, uh, was in the Croatian World Cup squad. Decided to accept the invitation. Uh, he was uh, born in Australia. Very, very bumpy, Tommy. Well, it's certainly not suiting Fiorentina at all. I find it tough to get involved in the game here. They're tough to string the pass, especially down the middle. On the outside, it looks okay, but in the middle. A late challenge that time. See the player at the bottom of the screen there, just running into an offside position. Torricelli was the player who came in with the reckless challenge. Be the free kick for the offside decision for Fiorentina. Taruti. You just wonder, Tommy, looking at that pitch, it could be perhaps the reason why Rui Costa has been admitted from the team tonight. Certainly, those sort of conditions would not suit him. And they're certainly missing his guard in midfield, aren't they? Well, he's the one man out there who's capable of holding out to the ball and carrying it and running at you. Torricelli again spotted the danger coming across quickly. But I think a man they're missing even more out there is Oliveira, the ex-Brazilian who now plays for Belgium. I mean, he has so much speed and he's very difficult to mark at the back. That's why Batistuta hasn't had any opportunities so far. that time it's really Fiorentina only playing with Badistuda up front because Amundo is playing just behind Badistuda and uh, Badistuda every time the ball comes anywhere near him he's usually got two or three defenders around him he's used to that but I'm sure that somebody like Oliveira would at least get those defenders thinking well you know the way Trapattoni has the team lined out there if you leave Padalino, Rui Costa and Oliveira off you can't imagine that he's going for a draw or maybe he's not all that interested in the competition but uh, you got to feel otherwise I mean it is a prestigious competition well, they are the huge split supporters who have come across from ferries across the Adriatic to uh, support their team as I said this is their 50th match in European competition this competition they've played 29 matches before tonight they've won 16 of them drawn three and lost 10. they've got a good record in europe 23 wins out of their previous 49 encounters and the 18 losses this competition they've never won it they have won the, the European Cup Winners Cup in fact they were the first winners of it back in 1961 to Glasgow Rangers in the final over two legs and lost in 1962 to Atletico Madrid in the same competition the FIFA Cup started as the old Intercities Fairs Cup competition it was played by against cities so it used to get teams from Madrid and from London made up of the clubs playing in those cities it's evolved now to the UEFA Cup perhaps the second most important uh, tournament in European competition after the Champions League as that push is going to result in a free kick Rico there just showed a little bit of maturity and uh, frustration area the ball cut back just trying to play it down there to Badistu was that more Torricelli now we 
haven't seen any anything of this young man that we've heard so much about, Mike, the man that uh, Vucho, that everybody figures is going to be a great player. They haven't been fit to find him at all. And they haven't been fit to find this man who we know is a great player. Free kick taken there by uh, Skoko. Repke there getting a block on that one, knocking it out for the throw. Repke, one of those very tough players, probably the best Czech Republic uh, player at the moment. It's another new signing by Trevor Tony this season. He's come from Sparta Prague. That was a foul throw. Yes, and the officials have actually picked it up, Tommy. That's unusual. UEFA Champions League here on ESPN. It's match day two, and live will be Sparta at Moscow against Real Madrid. Real Madrid, the holders, both those sides, in fact, making a good start on match day one with 2-0 victories. So the two unbeaten sides in that group clash in the UEFA Champions League match day two. Check your local listings for times of our live coverage of that game at a special time, incidentally. Oh, Batty Stutz is going to get run over here coming from the back. Yes. Sabalish coming through him and... Uh, just knocked him down. He's marking him very, very closely. And Trevor Tsi. Kept in play by uh, Fio, but he was able to do too much with it. Torricelli, okay, just getting his foot in. Appearances for Italy. A lot of people felt that uh, perhaps should be a higher number. Throw now for Fiorentina. Whose next game will be on the Sunday. They take on uh, Vincenza. Heinrich. Now more. Heinrich. Good turn there from the German international. Good turn of pace. Trying to get that one across. It was blocked. In the end, just gets a foot in as he's put under pressure there by uh, Darko Miladin. Well, he was a very late bloomer. He did become a professional footballer until he was 24 years of age. Doesn't score a lot of goals, but does like to do a lot of attacking. Any clearance that time. Sidewick split. Crowd in Fiorentina out in the midfield area. Not letting uh, Fiorentina get into any sort of rhythm. Sidewick get a corner. these teams having a very good history in European competition. This is their first ever meeting, in fact. Fiorentina is their fourth appearance in the UEFA Cup. As they defend this corner. And away that time now in Mundo. A little bit of uh, shirt pulling. Well, you can see one of the Woods uh, taking an exception to him being pulled down there and uh, Mondo got a good touch of the short he also got a little bit of the boot in the face I think that's what the Croatian player was complaining about that the boot grazed the side of his head oh, Graham Barber not sure if he knows any Italian or any Croatian but um, I think he made his point there Tommy well he understood what he wanted anyway he's given a free kick to Croatia Tony is going to make a substitution. This is early in the game. It's Posito is the player, I think, who's going to come on. Marfio is coming off. That surprises me. Well, in all honesty, Tom, we haven't seen too much of him in the first half. 
Yeah, but I mean, we're only 26 minutes into the game. There's a lot of players out there that, if he was going to judge them by the amount of ball that had to be all coming off, there must be. And I, I, I fail to understand this. I'm just wondering if he might have come into this game perhaps carrying a, a slight injury. I'm privy to exactly why he has been replaced. And I know the man he's taken on can score goals. He was the leading scorer for Empoli for the last two seasons. That's another one of the new signings this year. As Tommy said, he's come from Empoli. So he's on wearing the number 16 shirt. Theo is the player that's gone off. Tony is so involved in the matches. 59 years old, but he's got the... Uh, Enthusiasm of a 21 year old. Well, he certainly is, and he's, he's approached the record in Italy 624 games. If he wins 625 this year, and you got to feel that he's only a couple to go, then he'd probably become the leading all time winning coach in Italy, replacing a gentleman called Rocco, who was very famous for all of those victories. And Trapattoni is on the brink right now. So it's the biggest surprise to a lot of people is that he's never had the national team job in the Italian national side. Clearly the most uh, successful coach in uh, club history in the last uh, two or three decades. He's taken clubs to every title as Esposito is brought down. The referee is going to issue the first yellow card. Liskov is the player who goes in the referee's notebook. Well, I think that's a kind of for persistent tough fouls. He's, he's been guilty of a couple of them already. And Biliskov, the referee finally had enough. He said, give me your name. Hey, hey, hey. The referee wasn't ready. He'll have the free kick uh, retaken. The unfortunate thing about Trapattoni, Mike, with all his greatness, is the fact that he doesn't really believe in entertaining soccer. Win is the bottom line with him, and uh, he is more interested in playing a defensive game than he is an attacking game. That's one of the problems he's had. But he still never get, nevertheless, he gets the results. Yes, and I mean, you think back at some of the teams he's put together, that Juventus side that won the European Cup and the Cup Winners' Cup, but in the mid 80s you'd have to say that was a very entertaining side to watch when you get players like uh, Michel Platini playing there and Paolo Rossi Jackie Gorey there watching he's the man who put all this money into this club the way things are going a half an hour into the game and they haven't given up a score well they're really stifling uh, Fiorentina at this stage as Falcone plays it forward Fiorentina now just starting to pick up the pace that was the challenge and uh, going down under the challenge of Brejkovic the referee's going to bring out the yellow card again Elvis Brejkovic this time goes in the referee's notebook. Well, Kais had made a nice run through the middle. And you're going to see here there's the tackle coming in and he catches him late. He catches him the first time but he catches him the second time as well. It's Brejkovic then. She had a spell played at 1860 in Munich. It's part of the Croatian Euro 96 squad.
hear some of the Fiorentina fans are not all that happy with the way Fiorentina are playing this game. Well, certainly when you get a draw against a team like uh, Andrew Split, who have got some European pedigree, they've got some very good players. It's a pretty tough draw in the first round, and especially for Fiorentina, as we see that uh, rather reckless challenge. Having to play away from home isn't helping them either. And the field is certainly not helping them out there. And of course, the, you know, if there is one team that will settle to it quicker, it's Hadjik Splint, because a lot of the places that they've been playing in the last number of years might somewhat resemble these, because unfortunately for them, they don't have the very best playing surfaces in the world in some of the fields in Croatia. So it's a disadvantage to Fiorentina in that sense. And, uh, you know, had you explained to uh, obviously take it to it like a duck to water, they don't mind. The Fiorentina. It's always two players you saw then covering uh, Gabriel Batistuta. Esposito trying to go down that touch line. Use his pace just to try to unsettle this uh, defence. There's a nice ball played inside the defender. Enough white shirts back, and now the shot from Batistuda. Oh, Batistuda picked the ball up outside, and Mundo was in a much better position had the ball come across properly to him. But Batistuda had a lot of time. Unfortunately for him, the ball bounces a little bit high on his first touch, and his second touch is a deplorable touch. He just drives it miles wide. It seemed to take an eternity to come down. picking a tough man to mark today. Torricelli, one of the toughest markers in Serie A. I mean, when Juventus beat Ajax in the Champions League final, Torricelli almost did the job on his own, just leading the team and his determination at going forward. It was just a great example that day. So you can hear him yelling out there to his teammates. As this free kick comes in, a swing it to the far post and out that time. Now Noddy back in and Toldo uses all his height to grab that one. Oh, it wasn't a good clearance by him. He intended to throw it clear, but it wasn't a good one. He was trying to pick out Imundo, but he had two markers on him. So he's going to favour the defender. Watching the UEFA Cup, that's a first round, first leg encounter from the San Nicola Stadium here in Bari, alongside Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill. Just over 35 minutes played in this first half, no goals. A couple of yellow cards, both to the Vista inside from Croatia, that's high duke split. Mundo has been very involved, he's worked hard in this first half with very little reward. at the moment, looking to stifle Fiorentina in midfield, tactics that are working. Skoko plays that one through. Buta again making the overlapping run, he wasn't picked out, now the shot comes in. It was blocked, it's going to be a throw. Oh, it's blocked by a Hadju explain player. Way for Champions League continues here on ESPN. Match day two from the Olympic Stadium in Munich. Bayern Munich against Manchester United. See that one live on Thursday. Check your local listings four times. And that really is a crucial game for both those sides. Bayern losing on match day one. Manchester United being held to a draw at home on match day one. As the window is bundled down. And Skoko, who received a couple of words from the referee before now goes in the referee's notebook so 
that's the third yellow card. They've all gone to Hydrick split players. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd give him a yellow card in this. He looks like he's coming in to play the ball and Edmundo has a hold of his jersey and Edmundo as the player goes down. I think that was a little bit harsh giving Skoko a, a yellow card. And Fiorentina have got the free kick. Falcone. In there to pick out Heinrich, but again, plenty of white shirts back. split like the other teams from uh, Croatia very good on the counter of attack very good defensively and then they try to break forward and Fiorentina very aware of that they keep your players back as that one is pushed forward by Miladin Torina on the far side there he is gets it across at the second attempt and Toldo clearance but he's gone away from the danger area here's Amundo oh you'd have to say that had you explained on the most enterprising team so far in the first half big challenge there from Vinko the referee has seen it differently to the uh... well I'm not sure how he can give this free this way I mean, if he's going to give a free kick at all, it has to be the Fiorentina, but he's decided not so. I think he would have been much better served just let the play continue. was curling away from him so he does very well with it so he cutting across and just hammering it in there from outside there's Ivan Liko Croatian under 21 international give it a good strike on that there's a free kick now again for Hajduk Split conservatively but has shown a lot more enterprise as that shot finishes up well wide in there from uh, Skoko oh, I see the ball nodded back to Skoko he finds a slot between four Fiorentina defenders gets the free shot Torozzi is much too late coming in to try to cover him and Skoko should have done better with that one Heinrich on this near touchline he nearly picked out Vukko there who made a good run to the near post oh Vukko coming down the middle look at him he gets that touch onto the ball but he's facing away all the time Mike it's always going to be very difficult to turn the ball around because he cannot get his body around watch him as he comes in and he just hits it the way he's facing Confidence. I feel they've 
south of the early storm. Scott has, has really kept Batty Stewart in his box today, hasn't he? I was going to say he's very commanding in the back there. Here he comes forward. Not just a destructive defender either. He's a player that when he wins the ball, tries to do something with it. Now, as you expect, getting behind the Fiorentina defence. All comes across. time block. Still the pressure on though, Fiorentina. Wujda. Fiorentina now just being pinned back. Certainly the travelling Fiorentina supporters are not happy with what they're seeing at the moment. Standing there, as the ball was threaded through by uh, Shanisa. Shanisa, in fact, also had a spell playing in Austria with uh, Salzburg. He's a Croatian international. Over there, just waving players forward. So Shelley wanted him to play it uh, short. Minute of this first half, Still waiting for the first goal. Now Heinrich. Play through and again aim for Emundo and Banistuda, who are both in that uh, centre forward channel. But Rejkovic there did well. Gets the return now from his goalkeeper. A throw on the far side. Hydro well, Split will be happy to go in at half time with the 0 0 scoreline. Certainly, they've given a good account of themselves in the first half. Vuko gets away there from Falcone. Vuko, second time, it's in. Furious with the referee. But Hajju Split have taken the lead and it's Vuko. He was denied the first time, but got the rebound over the line. Well, I'm not sure what the goalkeeper is so mad about. Here's the shot. Here's the situation. And any one of a number of players that could have buried the ball. Vutko doing a nice move inside. He's looking up. Might have intended the pass at first, then he decided to take the keeper on. Not sure what Taldo's complaint is, Mike. It doesn't seem like he has any legitimate complaint. He went down to save the ball. He didn't save it, and then it was scooped in across him, and the ball ends up at the back of the net. So Vutko, his first real opportunity. And he's put it away, and in the stoppage time at the end of the first half, Hyju Split have taken the lead. Stay with us, coming up during the half-time break, we'll look at some of the results of the first leg matches in this first round of the UEFA Cup. We'll also have a look back at the first half highlights. Well, after a tentative start from Hyduke Split, they were certainly growing in confidence. And they've looked the better of the two teams in the last quarter of an hour, Tommy. Oh, no question about it. I mean, there's only been one team out there. Fiorentina haven't been able to find their way across midfield. And uh, Trapattoni's going to have to have a serious conversation at halftime with a lot of the players out there. They're just not getting the job done. There's nobody to carry the ball out of midfield. That's one of the biggest problems. Opportunity here in stoppage time to perhaps tie it up. Oh, I'm not sure where he found all this stoppage time, Mike. We've had one substitution and that's about it. We're now over 47 minutes played. Throw 
now for High Duke Split. good when he's gone forward he's given Hydric Split some extra width as Graham Barber brings the first half to a close the first half that saw Hydric Split score in stoppage time Vuko with his third goal in this season's UEFA Cup giving Hydric Split a 1-0 lead rather surprising here in Bari Fiorentina then with a lot to do in the second half as Vuko's goal brings up this scoreline Fiorentina nil, Haiju split one. Stay with us, we'll have a lot more when we return. Welcome back then as we await the start of the second half here at the San Nicola Stadium in Bari for a half time. Haiju split a lead in Fiorentina by one goal to nil. Fiorentina being forced to play here in Bari because of crowd trouble. And a shot there of uh, Vuko player who has scored the goal that separates these two teams. Graham Barber is our referee from England as Fiorentina get the second half underway. They're now attacking the goal to our left and a quick check down there, Tommy. It doesn't seem that either side has made any half-time substitutions. Well, I'm surprised that uh, Trapattoni hasn't made any changes, but of course he did make that change in the first half, so maybe he's satisfied with that. Although the fact that Mafia went out didn't make much of a difference to the attack. Mike uh, Fiorentina didn't put on much of an attack in it. I think you'd like to have changed about 11 players out there, Tommy, but unfortunately you could only change two maximum because he's already made one uh, change. But Hydric Split will be looking for a similar performance in this second half. So we saw in the first half, they played a very intelligent game, didn't they? I mean, the first quarter of an hour, they were very tight at the back. They didn't give anything away. The middle quarter of an hour of the first half, they started really smothering Fiorentina in midfield and started looking adventurous. In the last quarter of an hour, they really did start to catch Fiorentina on the uh, counter-attack. Well, that's been the difference, and uh, Fiorentina have to get their midfield involved. They have to get a supply of the ball to Edmondo and uh, Batty Stute if they're going to do anything. Luka has already scored once. He was looking for his second there as he stepped forward with that snapshot. No worries there, though, for Toldo. Studer has been very well marked by uh, Biliskov. Ball back that time for Taldo. Towering clearance. And Studer just trying to chest that one down to Emundo, but okay, the defender got there first. There seems to be a whole lack of urgency about. Uh, Fiorentina in this game, Tommy. The way you think it might be a pre-season training run, not to, you know, perhaps the second most important club competition in Europe. Well, it doesn't resemble anything like an important competition in the way they're playing, Mike. It's a kind of, well, if we manage to get a victory here, we'd be happy. If we don't, so what? I mean, there's no, as you said, there's just no intensity with the players at all. The thing is, is that teams stand to make a lot of money if they are successful in this competition, some glamour teams, as we showed you at half time, some of the other results, some big name clubs, and of course the clubs are allowed to keep the home gate receipts as well as the television receipts that they get for their home matches, so uh, when you look at some of the clubs that are still in this competition, there could be some uh, big matches coming up and I'm sure that Fiorentina, like all clubs these days, Always be looking towards the bank balance as Repka plays that one forward. Well, you look at the, some of those clubs, I mean, you know, Glasgow Celtic would certainly draw a big crowd, Aston Villa would draw a big crowd. If you go down the line, I mean, even if they came up against uh, one of the other Italian clubs like Parma or Roma, so you'd imagine that Trapattoni would be placing a lot of emphasis on it. Looks like he is, but uh, the players, well, that's another story. Uh, perhaps in their defence, Tommy, they've only played two competitive matches before today. One in the Italian Cup and a Serie A match at the weekend in the first round of that competition. And I think it's showing the players look a little bit rusty. Their touch is not quite there yet. But certainly the touch is there for Hydruk Split. And so close there to making it 2-0. 
Toldo there just stuck out a hand to deny Vuko. Oh, Toldo can't believe how all alone he was left and uh, Vuko just uh, walked in on him Mike. It was well set up on the right wing. Defender's been cut out easily. Push in the back that time. Esposito, and I think he's going to go in the referee's notebook. And Barber pulls out the uh, yellow card. And then uh, Carmine Esposito, who came on in the 28th minute as a substitute. Well, watch Taldo here. Look at him. He sticks out that right hand and he just swats the ball away. He's completely off balance. He's going in the opposite direction. That's a brilliant recovery by the keeper. And if it goes 2 0, I think Fiorentina are gone. How do you split with that 1 0 lead? Perhaps more importantly, it is a road goal. And it's a goal that could come back to haunt Fiorentina. So there's not quite the urgency, but uh, there's still plenty of time to go. 75 minutes played of this uh, second half. Interestingly though, Trapattoni has got players warming up on the sideline. We've got to look at Amoroso there. Now Heinrich. Four defenders in the centre of that defence. As Emundo takes it round the keeper and slots it home. That has come against the run of play, but Fiorentina are back in this. Oh, that's what makes Edmundo so dangerous. He's so strong on the edge of the box and you can see Torricelli up to encourage him for a little bit more, maybe. Edmundo does well here. He's going to shake off a couple of tackles. A couple of little bit of loose tackling there. Brodovic doesn't make the right contact with Edmundo and then Edmundo slides around the keeper. Here's the situation. He splits two defenders here. That's just pure strength pushes it wide at the keeper. That's good heads up play by Edmundo and he just slides it home into the back of the net. Miladin had an opportunity perhaps to catch up with the ball. You see the number 21 player come into your picture. He slides around the keeper. Here comes Miladin into the picture. He should be coming in there about now and he just misses making contact with the ball. A oh, cool finish in from Edmundo. And that goal coming against the run of play. It ties it all up. Fiorentina one, Hajduk split one. Trapattoni will be a little bit happier now. Well, just a little bit happier. He certainly... I think he needs a victory here to have any chance to bring this game on the road to kind of get a positive conclusion out of it because the way Hajduk split are playing here today, Mike, they're going to be obviously a better team at home. Esposito. Nice turn that time by Amor. Well played over the defence and uh, Edmundo there saying he wanted it played diagonally. It was played, played straight over the defence and uh, Batistuta just uh, stepping a yard offside as that ball was played. Well, really the first time in this game that uh, Hajduk have made a mistake at the back. And I think they'll look back on it, Tommy, and think that they should have perhaps got the ball clear because they did have opportunities. And as you said, Brekovic there with the far the loose challenge that uh, Edmundo just brushed him off. Oh, he just pushed his way through him. Well, then Edmundo's capable of pushing his way through a lot of defenders. He scored six goals in a game in uh, Brazil last year, which was a, a record. up quickly and takes the free kick after as he, he was pushed down a little bit more pace now from Fiorentina than we saw in the first half nice skills that time by the Nico on the far side Trapattoni's always so much involved in the game. Every game he's out there, he's hollering at somebody, he's biting his nails. 
saying earlier about his impressive list of uh, coaching achievements where he's pretty much won every top, every uh, competition he's actually entered into with one club or another and of course as a player he was uh, a European Cup winner with uh, Milan of course he made his name as a coach at uh, Juventus Milan's great uh, rivals standing there between two Fiorentina players as Serena was the player who originally got in now it's played to that far post and the header coming down from uh, Vuko he's not the tallest player Vuko but he does spring very well the way for Champions League coverage continues here on ESPN on Thursday it's Barcelona against Brombu from match day two check your local listings four times scorer Vuko 21 years old you just wonder how many European clubs have got their scouts here today Tommy well you'd imagine that there's a couple anyhow I mean the, the man certainly looks like he has a future he's now got three goals in this competition two in the qualifying match against Malmo of Sweden Torricelli losing his footing still battling away Torricelli is the sort of player that uh, would certainly appeal to Giovanni Travatoni he was the first signing he made when he was appointed coach at uh, Fiorentina after leaving Bayern Munich in Germany I think he realised that the first thing he had to do was strengthen up at the back and that was where he paid all the attention. I mean, he then went after Rapke and got him as well. And you got George Heinrich as well. So you, you add in those three into uh, a defence and you've made a pretty good job of them. I mean, he, he lost uh, Stefan Swartz and he also lost Kanchelskis and Serena. But they would be all midfielders. striking uh, was not for uh, Fiorentina's problem certainly the sound of those few players has helped finance the new signings as George Heinrich comes in with a rather clumsy challenge and the referee again reaches into his pocket so another yellow card George Heinrich this time Five yellow cards now by referee Graham Barber. I'm not sure why they're giving the referee the thumbs up on all these yellow cards. I've seen referees give you a red card for things like that. You can see Heinrich saying to the referee, you're right, you're right. Referees don't like you to do that. Amoroso looks like he's going to get a call to come on. Another player who used to be at Empoli and actually joined in 1997. That arena tried to uh, go forward and was stopped. Aladdin takes the throw. Now the shot. Again, Toldo had to be alert. Certainly, Toldo has been the busier of the two goalkeepers. That time, it Butza uh, had the shot, the defender off the outside of his foot and he hit it very well it was curling away from Toldo and as you said well I mean the other keeper Gabrich has had very little to do Toldo's had to come up with a couple of key saves he's Fiorentina can thank him for keeping them in the game yes that's a save just after half time at 2-0 down and that certainly made this a whole different ball game Torricelli work rate of Torricelli he would have been a great rugby player wouldn't he he just seems to be fit to keep going even when he gets down into a position where he's very low on the ground he's still always stretching that tackle then was more from that uh, the rugby code anyway Amoruso is about to come on so he comes on Sandro 
Kais has gone off. Oh, Kais never, never did much in the midfield today at all. Amoroso is more uh, a defensive midfielder than he is an attacking midfielder, but I'm sure Trapattoni's going to cut him loose today. They're not out of the I wood of this one, Mike. They need another they goal, at least. And they've got uh, a rather fortunate free kick. Henrik went tumbling down under the challenge, but there really didn't seem to be too much in it. Referees. Well, Heinrich has Heinrich has been pulled by the jersey. I think that's what he saw. He saw the jersey stretch. Now Heinrich. And Mundo, he's gold tied it all up. Still Mundo. He's got great balance, hasn't he? I mean, he was a little nudge there, but still kept his balance, kept his foot in strengths of his game Vanessa at the end the ball just given away there by uh, Brejkovic Fiorentina fans would like to see him more perhaps in a more forward midfield role at the moment he's playing just in front of the defence and a lot of time dropping in to cover Torricelli when he comes forward well he has a very he has a good cracking shot if they could get him up front I mean he's capable of scoring from long distance yes we saw one shot from him in the first half should be a goal kick. It took a final touch from uh, Esposito. He certainly has shown some enthusiasm since he's come on, Carmine Esposito. When he changed, each, I mean, Morfio had a tough time getting involved. I have to feel that Morfio had some kind of a nagging injury or something, Mike, and the, the, they just gave him the, the hook so quick. Because Morfio can be a good player on this day. famous whistle of his. Yes, I was going to say that he's uh, players all know I think by the different tone and the different uh, the length of the whistle is actually what he's trying to tell them. So it's all tied up 1-1 here at the St. Nicholas Stadium in Bari. Crowd just about 5,732 that's the figure that's been flashed on the uh, giant scoreboard. Vuko gave Hajduk split the lead a minute before half time. Emundo won a goal back and tied it all up five minutes after the break. A goal that came against the run of play. It's 1 1. See that for a trap by Trapattoni. Came off the bench and deadened it. I told you he's a useful player. He's got a European uh, Cup uh, winner's medal. possession they were losing ground and now they've lost possession as well and here go high duke split all pushed through Torricelli again covering no wonder he is living with his defenders yeah Repka I think he just did enough to cause a problem for the attacking player going in you're going to see the ball they're trying to square it behind Repka it almost makes if Repka just gets a little bit of the player just enough to push him out giving Torricelli the right angle coming in to get his foot on it Suda back to help defend and uh, easily taken there by Francesco Toldo keeper who joined in 1993 from uh, Ravenna so played at Verona 
Well, he had a good season last year. Just giving up about, he gives up a little bit more than a goal a game last season. Yes, from behind that Fiorentina defence, that's a, a pretty impressive uh, statistic. One would think uh, it could get a lot better this year with uh, the addition of those new players we were mentioning. Batterina. Managed to get it away and across there, despite the attention of Tuna's uh, Repka. Just get the feeling, Tommy, that Hydruk split seem a lot hungrier to win this game than Fiorentina do. Well, they're certainly fighting much tougher for the ball, and that was a good example of it there. I mean, it looked like that player had it nearly of getting the ball across, but he still managed to get his cross in. Get quickly taken there by uh, Miladin. It's too quickly. I think what Trapattoni is doing now at the back, he's going with three at the back more or less. He's pushing Henrik forward and it's causing a problem because it's leaving a hole there in front of Repka. And Repka's not sure whether he should be coming out or going back. And he's getting caught every so often on the left hand side of the defense. Yes, the one thing you notice also with Hyde Juice players when they do attack. They do get players forward quickly in support. They might really only be playing with one player up front, and that's uh, Vuko. But certainly when they do attack, that arena gets up very quickly as Badistuda hits that one on the turn. And the first real save of the day that um, Gabriel has had to make. And Batty Studer is the man who came forward and gets the touch on the ball as he just turns around and he bangs it keeper comes across with a nice save but Heinrich is really pushing up Mike Torricelli oh, Heinrich back in the left wing back position as it's now referred to one thing uh, if you've seen Trapattoni's teams over the years they are very well organised and Fiorentina at the moment, I think the player is just perhaps getting used to Trapattoni's system. The only player who really looks comfortable out there, Tommy, is uh, Torricelli. Yeah, and that's surprising because he's playing in a new position. I mean, here's a man who has played most of his lifetime on the outside of the defence and today he's been pushed into a central defensive role and has played very well in it. Mr. Jackie Gori, famous filmmaker as well as being a famous team owner. He'd be a lot happier now with his team at 1-1. Uh, Giovanni Trapattoni isn't. As Arena is the player that's going to be taken off for Hajduk Split. Duranya is the player who comes on. Former Croatian youth international. In fact, he's only 19 years old. So he comes on. challenge referee Graham Barber had a look at that but it's allowed play to continue all good turn from Amundo and he plays it through here's Badastuda Amundo's taken up a position in the six yard box and Badastuda couldn't get any height on his cross well the two big men Edmundo and Batistuta combining well there Batistuta just doesn't finish like he normally does well, early in the season well he walks inside of the box look at how clean he is Maybe if he was trying to square the ball back across to Edmundo, maybe he should have shot. Just over the halfway point of the second half, Batistuda waits as this free kick comes in and he eludes everybody. More coverage of the UEFA Champions League match day two here on ESPN when Arsenal take on Panathinaikos from Athens. Be able to see that game on Friday from Wembley Stadium. Arsenal against Panathinaikos. Check your local listings for times. Now, more 
plays it wide. I just get the feeling, Tommy, that Fiorentina just starting to pick up the pace slightly now. Well, they're certainly coming good in the midfield. They're getting much more possession out of the midfield. Well, that right-hand side of the field is still a problem for them. If, if they get caught on a counter-attack, they can be in deep trouble there. Way up and under. No worries there for Gabriel. She, uh, Gabriel, 36 years old. Great servant for his IG Split Club. Of course, played with them in the Champions League back in the uh, 1994-95 season. A lot of European experience as well as international experience playing with the Croatian national side. And straight up in the air there from Esposito. Ball pushed through and uh, gap reach quickly off his line, although the flag was up against Batistuta. Well, Esposito had the right idea. Trapattoni has to like that. And uh, once again, you can see Batistuta. Oh, I don't know about that. Tommy, they brought in a rule in that in these very close decisions, they would favour the attackers. Never do. I was going to say that. When are they actually going to start? Never. Hold old habits die very very hard in this game and that's one of them I mean we've some seen some deplorable situations here today Esposito tried the shot Gabriel uh, fumbled it but stopped it going over the line I didn't think he did actually I thought the ball had gone over the line this is better from Fiorentina and as you split defence just looking a little bit shaky now at times. They haven't looked quite so commanding as they have done in this game. Uh, Fiorentina have stepped it up a level. Torruzzi takes the throw. As you expect. And here goes Vuko right through the centre. He's pulled back well, by Torricelli. Red card. Red card, it should be. I'm not sure if he'll give it to him, but it should be. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. No, oh, the referee had no hesitation. Well, he's the last man back. There is no, there is nothing in the book that says it can be anything else. There's nobody else back. He has to pull him down. When he pulls him down like that, it has to be a red card. Look, there's nobody back. He's the last defender. This is a goal-scoring opportunity. The rule says if you deny a goal-scoring opportunity, it's a red card. Very simple call. Here's Torricelli back into the picture. I mean, there's ample proof of it. He's the last man on the line. Out he goes. Yes, the pace of Vukko there. Slice him right through the Fiorentina defence. And uh, Torricelli just pulled him back. He didn't even argue. He knew himself, Mike, that he had done the damage. So Fiorentina now down to 10 men. But what a man to lose because Torricelli has perhaps been the pick of their team, Tommy. Well, he's the best player they had on the field all day. This is a huge blow to Fiorentina. How do you explain what a great opportunity to get a free kick in a good situation and they're down, they're up a man, Torricelli gone. happy now the wall is back the required 10 paces as this uh, free kick goes straight against the wall it's charged down appeals for handball nothing given so I'm sure by now Trapattoni trying to get instructions out how to reorganize this uh, Fiorentina side What he has to do now is, what he will probably do is he will push Repke into the middle and uh, he will bring Heinrich back. That's what he's doing. You can see Repke's taking Torricelli's place and Heinrich now takes up that spot on the outside where he should be in most of the game. Vuko again, no brought down, no uh, decision this time. There's Amundo. Turn on the afterburners. Oh, that was a nasty challenge. He didn't make contact and perhaps he's rather fortunate he didn't because I'm sure the referee would have brandished the car because it, there was no way he was ever going to get the ball to me. Well, that's one of the things that Edmundo does sometimes very rash 
attempts at tackles, not so much the tackles, but it's, it's just that he goes so wildly for them. Leveled it up in the second half, but now find themselves down a man. Toricelli sends off. I suppose the big problem now for Fiorentina is that he was sent off on a uh, red card, not two yellows. So he's most probably going to get at least a two match ban. If you picked up two yellow cards and get sent off that way, you usually only get banned for a match. But that was a deliberate unsport in play and uh, he could finish up with a two match or at least a two match ban maybe even more he certainly won't be available for the second leg in a split in a fortnight's time Substitution now for Hajduk Split. Anthony Saric, the player that's coming on, just 18 years old. Born in Australia, but was actually included in Croatia's World Cup squad that went to France. And the player that's going off is Mujja. And he certainly had a very good game, so we're very impressed with his play. Certainly was, and was a little bit unfortunate that he didn't catch uh, the keeper out sleeping there. He had one shot that came off the side of his foot. I thought it was going to end up at the back of the net. So Anthony Sturridge will slot into that left back spot. Hydric split. We've got a man over. Cross. And that was Sarich's first touch. And it's led to a corner. There five corners to one to Fiorentina. A bit of push in and shuffle in the box there. The number 27, Sablajic. The player involved from a uh, hydric split. Liko with a corner. They let the ball bounce in, yet it didn't bounce right kindly at all. But again, some indecision at the back there from Fiorentina. They didn't handle that corner well, Tommy. No, they didn't, and uh, they allowed the free shot on the outside, which can be a disaster. scoring in the 44th minute Abundo tied it all up in the 50th minute it's 1-1 here at the San Nicolas Stadium in Bari alongside Tommy Smith I'm Mike Hill but Fiorentina a home side finding themselves down to 10 men now with Torricelli sent off in the 72nd minute width of this pitch that was Saric well they're trying to pull Fiorentina apart at the back and uh, they're not biting for it they've dropping Esposito back to where Heinrich was Heinrich is out on the end of the defense now They've changed it again now, Mike. They have Heinrich in the middle where Torricelli was, and Rep is back out to where he was. Saric. Skoko. Check out Saric. There you see Heinrich standing there in the arc. Will he push forward from there? That's a good question. The Libro position has been uh, made famous by one certain. Uh, German, certain friends back and about. You just wonder if uh, Heinrich, who is a very intelligent player, and you 
you've really got to be to play that sort of position. Might just, uh, if he sees the opportunity, go uh, forward as Batistuda caught that one nicely and got the free kick at the same time. A hydric split. Shuneska. Good skills that time by uh, Skoko. Play that time would made a run through the centre forward channel. Heinrich was touched him down, but he recovered quickly. Heinrich that's got off the defender's head now. Here goes Emunda. Fender got there first. Mundo there, so quick over those opening uh, two or three yards, Tommy. And in the end, uh, Bakovic just got there in time. Well, that Mundo just, he's like a sprinter out of the blocks, Mike, and he's so strong that unless you're very strong at the back yourself, you're going to be in trouble. And it looked like had you explained for him the trouble there, but. Inside the final 10 minutes, it's 1 1. It's the first leg in this first round encounter of the UEFA Cup. Hydruk split their 50th match in uh, European competition. And another Italian club with their eyes on Europe will be Juventus. They're in the UEFA Champions League and on match day two they take on Rosenborg of Norway in Trondheim. Never an easy place to play. You'll be able to see that game on Saturday. Check your local listings four times. The UEFA Champions League as Esposito, who came on as a first half substitute, is now replaced himself. Oh, Mary comes on, Mike. He's only played five games in a couple of years, a youngster. So Fiorentina are showing that they have a few youngsters on the bench as well. Yeah, he's only 20 years old. As this one is played through, and here's a great opportunity for Badassiri. It falls down to Amundo. Oh, what a finish! And despite being down to 10 men, Fiorentina have got into the lead. Uh, the South American connection work at the perfection. Checky Gori says, I like that. That's why we took him back. And Mondo's tanking the heavens. He should turn around and tank Buddy Stute as well. It looked like the chance was going to fall to Badistuta. In the end, it fell to Amundo, and he finished it with some aplomb. Oh, Batistuta coming across. He gets a touch on it, just enough out. And Mundo puts the bulge in the old onion bag with a brilliant shot. Batistuta wanted to take it himself. It came off his body, and Mundo pounces on it, and he just rockets it in. Look, it might have even been a handball against Batistuta, but referee ruling that it was unintentional. And... Uh, Everything else was intentional after that, certainly the way Edmundo hit it. Look at that, his timing, he waits, he's... Oh, what patience. Very few players will wait that long for it. Yes, Badistur, I think, was teeing that one up and just lost his foot in. So, Mundo gets his second goal in the second half. Coming just eight minutes from the end. And that gives Fiorentina now a 2-1 lead over Hydruk Split. What a goal, what a big goal that could turn out to be as Esposito answers the questions of the media. Well, he's just been uh, taken off uh, about a minute earlier. So you'd have to say it was an inspired substitution from uh, Trapattoni. Although Miri uh, really wasn't involved in the goal in any way. But coaches will take uh, any accolades they can get. Now, Hydric split who for so long controlled this game, certainly for long periods in the first half, and looked very, very comfortable in the second half. I'm going to bring it on as a sub now. Well, Vulic is the player that's going to come on. The last real throw of the dice now for a high duke split. And the player they're going to take off.
should enter, I think, is the player that's going to come off. He's worked hard in midfield, the veteran who has played for Austria, Salzburg. So he comes off and Vulic, 31 years old. And he has just over six minutes to make an impression on this game. Now Saric. Too many Fiorentina fans here who have made the journey. The ones that are here now are very, very happy, as one would expect. But you just wonder, Tommy, 2-1, if they can hold on and take that to a split, is it going to be enough? Well, they'll certainly be very happy. I mean, to look at it now, coming into the game, you would have wanted to win by more than one goal. But the way the game transpired, the way Hadjik Splint took the game to them and actually took the lead, and now that they went down a man I think they'll be happy enough going out with 2-1 but it's going to be a tough, tough task for them when they get on the road Yes, I think they'd have settled for uh, any victory at one stage because Hyduk had some very, very good uh, spells in this game and even now Toldo has certainly been uh, the bitter of the two goalkeepers Well, you're going to see the ball inside where's Batty Stuta? Well, he's just as the ball is hit he's onside I mean that's a bad call once again when the ball is struck there's the ball being struck Batty Studer was still onside the only good thing that Fiorentina have Mike in terms of it doesn't matter where you go I mean if you have strikers like Edmundo and Batty Studer, you can score whether you're on the road or whether you're at home I mean they have the capabilities of scoring Yes, they the scoring potential. I think that, uh, in a lot of cases, will perhaps frighten teams like Carhaiju uh, Split, who really could never afford to just go all out attack. As uh, an opportunity finishes up way over the crossbar. Skoko. Doesn't know had the shot. Trapattoni seems a lot to happier now. Still living every kick that's out there. He certainly expends a lot of energy during the game, Trapattoni. He's probably as tired as most of his players after every game. When you consider how many games he's done, that's a, a lot of games, a lot of tired days for him. It's very animated when he's on the bench, but off the uh, bench and away from the game, he's very laid back, very relaxed. He enjoys talking about football. He's very uh, courteous make himself available for interviews when the game is on he is living and breathing every kick well, it's amazing you look at the big clubs that he coached and how great a job he done with them and you get down over his resume and the only one that fired him was Calgary tells you something yes uh, never quite worked out a Calgary for him but uh, said earlier he's won Pretty much every tournament that he is taking teams into, including the European Cup, the Cup Winners' Cup. This competition he's won on three occasions. Six, World Club Championship. Yeah, six Serie A titles, two Coppa Italias. Head tennis at the moment, and uh, as you expect, wanted to get it down on the deck there's Saric just playing it inside to Liko who took his eye off the ball we have got two minutes plus stoppage time Fiorentina not too, too keen at the moment on uh, perhaps trying to add to that tally they just really want to ensure that they do not concede another goal The travelling support from uh, Florence. Well, it's amazing at a home game we have travelling support from both sides. Well, as I said, the crowd 5,732. 
It's cost uh, Chucky Groyer and his club a few dollars for that indiscretion in the last time they were in Europe. Throw for Hydric split. For Lich. Nico. Now Saric. Side this time, Liko. The shot coming in from uh, Vulic. Uh, no worries there for Toldo. Inside the final minute, All eyes will be on the fourth official to see uh, how much time will be added. By referee Graham Barber. Well, we had a lot of substitutions and we had a few stoppages. And he came up with about three minutes of stoppage time at the end of the first half, which uh, well, I mean, confused us. If he could come up with three minutes in the first half, Mike, he should be fit to come up with about ten here. Now oh, he came up with six. Didn't do so bad, did he? He's come up with six minutes. Well, it's going to be a long, long time for Giovanni Trapattoni in his Fiorentina side. Remembering they are down to ten men. Mundo taking the free kick quickly and Batistuta. I think Batistuta's uh, auditioning for an Irish Gaelic football team the way he's been catching the ball. That's about three times he's done it today. He could play for the Argentine uh, Pumas. In, uh, rugby union, the way he's been uh, catching the ball. Certainly be a handy goal kicker for them, wouldn't he? Sure would. Now Saric. Not a good clearance by Heinrich. There you go, Heinrich split the game, but Heinrich uh, that time recovered it, made up for his error by just uh, blocking the way forward. Uh, Taldo is a master at this. He'll take a long time before he takes this goal kick. distance way over the halfway line and Fiorentina have got another free kick that will suit them well you can see Batty Stuto would like to get another score Trapattoni would like to get another score oh the ball play through and Emundo nearly did denied his hat trick there by some brave goalkeeping from Gabriel. still the danger's not cleared and in the end Emundo just crowded out now that would have been a very important goal wouldn't it and Mondo pounced on that one quick inside of the box. Mondo there showing all his class and his anticipation. It's Saric now. Now you're going to see the ball chipped inside from the free kick. Look at Edmondo takes it down well he gets it onto the left foot keeper didn't know much about him actually he put his hand up for the ball he missed it with his hand but his body struck it Lico with the corner and out swinger and the header in the end too high Trapattoni is talking to the coaching staff he's talking to the substitutes Showing them exactly uh, what the players out there should have been doing. It was Brejkovic who had that header that went too high. As we come up to the end of three minutes of stoppage time. Still another three to play. They aim for uh, Saric, but not the... Uh, Esther passes, Edmundo is penalised, making it back for the defender. Village playing it forward now. Hydruk split. Do they bundle one in here? Uh, Saric came in and uh, rather a reckless challenge from uh, young Saric. He got turned. Graham Barber had a good uh, view of that. 
Torozzi is the man who goes down. You can see Heinrich saying, hey, he used his foot here. Let's see if we can pick it out. Oh, I think it's just a case of going for the ball and then uh, two players colliding. Yeah, it's a little like the knees actually uh, hit that time. And there certainly didn't seem to be any malice in that challenge from uh, Saric. Now we've got 37 fouls. A free kick for Fiorentina. See there, they're wasting a few more seconds, Tommy. Oh yeah, Taldo's a master at this. I mean, that time he couldn't find the ball. The ball was lost. He had no idea where it was. All of a sudden, you know, he's he's run off about 20, 25 seconds here. Sarich. Away now, Mundo playing this run through Badastuta. The flag goes up to deny him. Oh, Batistuta can't believe that he was offside, although he doesn't complain much. Once again, I mean, he's not offside. That ball is already on its way before he steps clear of the defender. Look at, I mean, it's two yards off at Mundo's boot. It's when the ball was played, the flag stayed down. The one thing we've noticed, Tommy, throughout this game, though, is the understanding between Emundo and Batistuta. Only their second game together this season. But as the games progress, they seem to have got on the same wavelength. Oh, yeah, they, you know, they're working it out. They're two class players. Emundo didn't play that many games last year either. They only had about 10 games last year. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be better this combination is going to get. Fiorentina will make a little bit of noise in Serie A this year, I'd say. Rigaran Barber checks the watch yet again. Well, he said six minutes, right? Well, we are right on six minutes now. Players looking across at the referee. Still no final whistle. It's going to be a throw on the far side for Fiorentina. Now Emundo and his two goals have settled the issue as the final whistle goes. And Tommy Fiorentina, well, they came good in the end, but they weren't too convincing. No, they certainly weren't, and they're very lucky to get those two goals from Edmondo. Whether it'll be enough to make it stand up the next time or not, that's the question. Vuko, though, gave Hydrick split the lead in the 44th minute, and then two goals from Edmondo. And that brought up a final score here at the San Nicola Stadium in Bari. A Fiorentina 2, Hydrick split 1. So Fiorentina go to Croatia for the second leg with a 2-1 lead. One wonders if it will be enough. But Emundo has given them a chance with two goals. And 2-1 was the final scoreline. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the UEFA Cup. For Tommy Smith, I'm Mike Hill for ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.